Let us pray. Loving Father in heaven, we ask of you to teach us how to trust, how to live, to give us understanding of the science of trusting, that we may learn to trust you even more, and that we may practice what you teach us to be. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Okay, we need to chant. We have drawn this chart here because we are looking at the philosophy of trust today. Because we want to know and to be sure that we know how to trust God. Amen, brethren? Amen. So I have drawn this chart here, which I will explain as we go along. In fact, let me explain this chart here first of all to you. Right? For the time you say trust, you are dealing with a mental state. A what? Yes. So, okay. I'm going to use this pen to write with. Okay? And I'm going, right, going to write two of the most troublesome faults that breaks trust based upon what trust is. So I, I just took the pen to do it. Did you see what I just did? What did I do? I took the pen and did what? Right with it. I trusted the pen. Or if I had no trust that this pen would write, would I take it up and write? No. But I wanted to write two of the greatest problems that destroy trust. So I, uh, I took the pen up, trusting that it would write, and it did write. Okay, my dear brethren? Right? So what we, yes. The acts that will work together with hope, but we are now starting, right? Somewhere between these two here, hope is hidden. Right? Because hope accompanies it. Right? Okay, so we are now starting off here. Now, first of all, trust. There's, it's a mental state. A state that a person has in his mind. That mental state is a combination of these two impressions upon the mind put together. When you put these two impressions together, anticipation and confidence together, those two put together is what you call trust. Just so let's get into it now and let's break it up. Okay, by then? Okay, by then? Yes. Now, first of all, when you trust someone or something, you have an acceptance to, de to depend on that thing or that person. In other words, before you can trust, there must be in your mind an acceptance of the person or the thing enough to depend on it. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Once you have a mental acceptance enough to depend on the person or the thing, that in itself is what encourages you to trust. So if a person does not have an acceptance of someone or something enough to depend on them, they won't trust. So every trust that is reached out, or every trust that is exercised, means, number one, you must have an acceptance of someone or something enough to depend upon that someone or that something. <clears throat> Two, trust also means reliance upon a superior. Now remember, if you have an acceptance to depend on that thing, it would mean you are having a what? A reliance upon what? A superior. a superior. Why a superior? Because of what trust means you are looking for. Because of what trust means you are looking for, it must be reliant upon a word, a superior. So when you put acceptance to depend on, plus a reliance upon a superior, it creates a mental state. What is the mental state? It is a mental state of anticipation and confidence together. 
illustration. Put out your hand, my dear brother. <laughs> okay, put out your hand. We are looking at a, we are looking at a mental state of anticipation and confidence. All right. I am going to give you this pen. Do you want it? So you trust that I'm going to give you. Okay. Watch what is happening here. He is anticipating what? Getting it, amen. Yeah. And he has what? Confidence is going to get it. So you put the two together, and that is what you call what? Trust. You just might give him, I didn't just want to pull it back to Brady principle. Right? But observe, so there must be an acceptance in such a way as to depend on. And added to that, there must be a reliance upon a superior, something that is superior. When you put those two together, as you're relying upon a superior, it means you have what? An anticipation, and at the same time what? A confidence. So when you put the anticipation and the confidence together, that is what you call what? Trust. Now somewhere in the middle, hope is lost. Where is it lost? Hidden here. Because if you have an anticipation, and a what? Confidence, it means in the middle is what? Oh, is that understood, my dear friend? So now, we're going to look at here. Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't quite understand the superior part. He asked who or what will be the superior. So let me start giving you my notes now. So I have my notebook. I usually write something, you know. And I sit down, watch outside at the ATF. And I take my notebook and I'm five point ten and just started writing. This is what I wrote. Like my dear friend, you like to write. I wrote it. Trust. Listen carefully. We are moving slow. Trust is a mental attitude of accepting someone or something in such a way as to depend on him or it. Notice to depend on him or it for some form of consolation or success. You got that? You're looking for some form of what? Consolation or what? Success. Therefore, the thing has to be superior. Because if the thing is below your capability, you can't look for success here. Therefore, you cannot have what? Trust. So, whatever it is, it must be a superior. Let me read again. Trust is a mental attitude of accepting someone or something in such a way as to depend on him or it for some form of consolation and success. It is a mental state of reliance. Now here comes the point. It is a mental state of reliance created by God for dependent beings. They didn't catch up one. Once you have a being that is created, it must be what? Dependent. Is that understood? And once you have a being that has what? Dependent. That being must have what? Trust for success. Did you get us clear? The fact that we are all created means we are dependent. Amen? Therefore, trust is, in fact, a mental state of reliance created by God for dependent beings that they may attach themselves, notice this, for dependent beings that they may attach themselves to someone or something superior to themselves for success. Yes, my dear brother. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
But since you want more clarity, I'll give you an example. Have you ever taken any food and cut it up and put it in the sun to dry? Yeah, they put it in the sun for it to dry. Anybody ever do that? So you're relying on some thing that was created by God, but you're relying on what? Something. You have an anticipation that it will dry while you have what? Confidence and while you have what? Hope in the dream. But that that is drying it is superior to you because you can't blow on it and dry it. <laughs> so you are we we are relying on something that is superior to your powers as a human being. To gain that success. That's why I use the word something. I use the word something because in the sense of a person who doesn't know God, even people who do not know God have the mental state of what? Trust. If you don't have the mental state of trust, you wouldn't sit there right now. Because that bench could throw you down. And please don't stand up on your legs because it might drop. And for God's sake, don't even go in a car. You might even reach there. And for, for God's sake, don't even turn the key. It might explode. And for God's sake, don't even drive down the road. You don't need to reach. It is a mental state created by God. And when you are having trust, you are always relying on something superior to your powers. If you want to reach home in, in half an hour, you can't run. If you're going arima. So there is something real and uh, much more superior to you in speed and movement and that won't get tired that you must rely on. Okay? Ultimately, there's a source of that thing, the person from before, God. But really and truly, even unconverted people and even atheists have trust. Because when he takes his arm to shoot, he isn't taken to shoot because they won't shoot. Even a criminal has trust. Because when the criminal goes to stab, he isn't taken the knife because the knife won't stab. And the knife is superior to his finger when it comes to stabbing. So it must be something always superior to your powers that you can rely on for certain amount of success. Because trust, therefore, is a, is a mental state created by God for dependent beings to rely on something superior for success or someone. In our case, it has to be God. And as you said, God, I put, I put here, i.e., that is God. Amen. In my book here. I just didn't read it for you. Okay? Dependent beings. Yeah, if, if, if I were to read that over and over to get, to get it all, I have plenty more to read here now. But let me just tell you this. What is the chart on the board? Watch. Trust. Acceptance to depend on. Reliance upon what? When you put that acceptance to depend on and reliance on a superior together, we get an anticipation together with hope and a what? Confidence together. That is what you call trust. So you've got it there on the shelf. That is what you call trust. But wait, we need to travel on. By the way, I said these are the two greatest things that they destroy trust. Eh? These are the two greatest things that destroy trust. Because those two things, in one way, break these two. Once these hypocrisy and insincerity is there, it breaks the two that they put together. And once it breaks the two that they put together, you can't have a trust. trust. We'll look at that in a short time. We've got to read. Yeah. True reliance upon Sophia. Trust. Woo! Amen, brother. Amen. Yes. Amen. Wow. Yeah. I like that word. Very good. I hadn't thought about that. Somebody else, have your hand. Yes, my dear. 
given a Bible and he's told take this book and read this book and you will learn something of God but he's unconverted when he's given the Bible so he says okay and he takes the book and he begins to read and the Holy Spirit shows him things about God before the Holy Spirit shows him things about God if he didn't trust this book to show him something he wasn't going to take it and that is why you see trust. Watch me. Think about a mental state. A person has anger. Right? Anger is a mental state, right? Okay? Yes. A person has fear. That's another mental state. Okay? Yes. A mental state created by God for dependent beings is trust. They didn't catch up one. A mental state created by God for dependent beings is what? Trust. Once you have it, you can survive. Tell a person, you need five hundred dollars for this, um, for, for this, for, for, for such and such. Go and work in such and such, and when they get the money, save it and go and do it. Why does the person say okay? They're not converted. Why do they go and work? Why do they save it and save the money? Because they are dependent, and the mental state created by God for dependent with trust. They have it. But some people say, but look, sometimes people just trust and they don't get through with it, we come into that. Right? We'll come to when their trust is broken. We come into that. But before that, just get to understand the trust. Let's go on again. We look at some scriptures in that shop while the one that sister when I said here quoted, trust in God with all your heart. And lean not on your own word. Understanding. There's a reason why the Bible says lean not on your own word. Understanding. understanding. Right? Because your own understanding has a, a, a problem of making you see something to be right that you can trust it when it is not right. <laughs> so when you go into the now, you get what? Failure. And that's when the knowledge was coming. The knowledge was convincing enough for you to know where to take that mental state and cast it upon. Nobody is going to tell me, brother, you're hungry, go and eat a knife. <laughs> because I have knowledge of food that I'm supposed to eat, amen? And I trust the food to develop my body, not a knife. Unless somebody can fool me enough to make me to think that that knife is going to help me get um, strength when I eat it. Whatever knowledge that is, that is my own understanding. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. But wait. Point number two. Show your voice. I just said I'm still not too clear. Show your voice. Show you something from your mind. Explain what is spiritual trust. 
The spiritual is it going God or the trust? Which one? Is the knowing of God or the knowledge you have to direct the trust or is it the trust? But knowing God is not trust. Knowing God must come before trust. That comes to our very first scripture. Proverbs 22. And we will look from verse 15. Proverbs 22. From verse 17. From verse 17. From verse 17. Just for there. I'll talk about this in a short while, right? Thank you. Put it right here. Yes, you're good. We read, Bow down thy ear and hear the words of the wise. Did you hear that? Do you tell that only to a Christian or to anybody in the world? Anybody. anybody. Including a child of God. Yes. So you tell it to a spiritual person and an unspiritual person. We read. And hear the words of the wise. And apply, and apply thine heart to my knowledge. Now you're applying your heart to God's knowledge. How do you apply your heart to God's knowledge? By looking to see the reasonableness, the sensibleness, the truthfulness of it. That's how you apply your heart to his knowledge. It goes on. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. So now after you understand the knowledge, you're supposed to do what? Keep it within thee. Thy word have I hid there. Okay, don't go too far here. Don't read out the other part. So that way will just become the scripture there and not the part of keeping it in thee. We go on. If thou, if thou keep it within thee, they shall whittle be fitted in thy lips, which means to say you'll be able to speak it properly because you understand it well, right? Now here comes the point. That thy trust may be where? That's right. So what comes before the trust in the Lord is understanding the Lord. See the truthfulness of the Lord. I ask now, did the person only get trust then? Or did they have trust before, but now the trust is directed by what they understand. Amen. That's how I say explain spiritual trust. Amen. Is it trust? Let me say this to you again. When God created man, God created different mental states that's supposed to be with man. So whether you're converted or you're unconverted, you have those mental states. It is left for the devil now to misuse them in you. Take for instance, it wasn't the devil that created the mental state of fear. He didn't create that. Fear is not a creation of the devil. God created the mental state of fear. But when it flow, it must flow when God tell it to flow. This, watch me. If I see a horrible sin here, right? Of blasphemy like a sodomite coming and saying that this is supposed to be legalized. I should want to fear that because I know the retribution coming for them. But at the same time, while I fear that, I have trust in God. 
But the mental state of fear keeps me away from it. A child, this is the reason why a child must be punished. The mental state of fear in a child must be worked upon. Not that only, eh? when it comes to correction, eh? not that only, but that in part. And that mental state of fear must be worked upon that the child will keep away from wrong. That's why the Bible says, punish them. They will not die, but you will deliver their work. They so from them. Why did the Bible say that? Because when the child do wrong, they fear what? Punishment. Yes. It's not understood. You're going to tell a person, watch me, walk out in the middle of the road in those cars, then nothing will happen to you. The person say, are you crazy or what? <laughs> you know it will kill you, amen? amen? So you must have fear for that. What do you say? Yeah. That's why when you're driving, you don't drive wild and mad as if everything is okay. You don't go from the side of the road to the other side, driving crazy. Because you have fear. Fear is a mental state that can protect you. Yeah. And it was created by God. But how the devil know how to misuse it? Amen? Amen. So likewise, hope. Hope is another mental state created by God. Amen. And everybody has hope. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. The lawyer tells a big, big murderer, sit down here in this chair as we discuss the case. So he's going to sit down in the chair without hope that it will hold him up. If you have no hope it will hold him up, do you think he will sit here? Exactly. Are you listening to me? Yes. So even the criminal who is in his criminality has a mental state of hope. Amen. These Amen. things were mental states created by God that can be used or what? Misused. Amen. I'm so yes. trust. That's why when I asked you what the spiritual trust, I knew you would have to show the spiritual thing is God. And the trust only becomes spiritual to you when you trust God. Not more than trust. We have to trust. Amen. Understand? Mr. Joy? I'm continuing to read. Read it again. State. Yes. And the two, do watch me. The mental state in your mind is a combination of what? A combination of what? And what else? Those two together is what we call who? Uh, what, sorry, what we call trust. Trust. But hope is right here with it. Guys, what I mean? Let me just, let me give an illustration to explain what I mean. 
I have no fear for crocodiles because I am the perfect love of God. So I'm going to push my hand in the mouth and be crocodiles. A perfect love can so you fear, so I have no fear. Don't get the illustration here in that. Perfect love will show you if you put in your hand here, you will get it well. So perfect love capitalized on that fear that God created of a state in all people to tell you, don't put your hand here. Yeah, that's like, or, or the Bible say, fear to put your hand here. <laughs> so watch me, when it says perfect love casts out all fear, it means fear with regards to spiritual things. These we are going and do the work of God, and God tell you, go right there in Africa and preach, because you have the perfect love of God, you wouldn't say, Lord, I'm going to stop the government in that area. <laughs> if God simply says, I am telling you, go and tell the police, if you have a, 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 a 15 and a 16 year old boy shooting at you, and you shoot and you say to yourself, you won't find bullets all over the head, all over your body. You don't defend yourself by shooting up three or four or five times. One bullet is enough to stop the person. So the fact that it has plenty of bullets on the body, it needs to say it was an execution. Therefore, all what you're saying about this one was criminal, that one was criminal, nobody is against criminal arm, against the fact that criminals must be, ar must be arrested. They must be, what do you say? Amen. And if they have no police, we are all in trouble. Amen. So we need the police. But it is not only criminals must keep the law, the police must keep the law, even when they are the criminals. Amen? Amen? Amen. So if I go and tell the one tell the police, I, I, I say, no, I can't go and tell them that they want them to charge me or so on. Well, see, the love of God will tell me, go and tell them that. Amen. So I wouldn't have that fear. So the fear it casts out is fear for doing the will of God and fear of trouble in the process of doing the will of God. Amen? Amen. But that same God tell you, right? That you must fear the fires of hell. And that you must fear sinning and standing in the presence of God. Amen, baby? That same God tells you that. So that is what it is. And it says, work on your salvation with what? Yeah. So we must just understand the context of this. So yes, brother, now. Then of course. That's something that's come to my mind with trust. You see, what, what confused me is when the superior, as, we hear, as I hear superior, some come to my mind that praise it, only God is superior. Yes. You know, so when I hear superior, that is what comes to my mind. That is why I answer the clarity. Yes. But the trust has nothing to do with praising. The trust is just... Just um, a, mental like a mental state of the mind. That, that, that they exercise. That they exercise. To in, gain success. To gain success. It doesn't matter as great, like it would be praising the bench. No, you wouldn't them. praise the bench. You'll praise so, God who made the bench. As and just God as, made as the I hear superior. And you know, what the superior would bring that to the mind. Yeah, the word superior means it must be superior to your power. If I tell you, brother, I am giving you this dashing here. I want you to peel all the skin off the dashing and then cut it up and put it in ball. You're going to take your hand and do so. A knife is superior to your hand when it comes what? Cutting. So you can trust a superior. Amen. You rely upon what? A superior. Amen. Amen. Right? But when it comes to superior in creation, your body more superior to a knife. I can ask a knife to give me a drink of water, yeah. but I can ask you. All right? Yeah, yeah. Right, so when I say superior, it means the, 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 the thing, the service, the thing supposed to give you must be a service you can't give yourself. Yeah. Amen. 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 You understand? Amen. Amen. I can't sit on myself. No. <laughs> I want to let people try. I'll go right here. Amen? Amen. Right. But are you getting the thought? Yes. Brother, um, yeah. When I, I want to read a scripture, showing how fear is um, used in the right context, right? In Exodus chapter 20, verse 20, I'll just read it quickly. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you 
that his fear may be before your face that you sin not. So here we see how fear is used in, in, to, for us not to sin. And how God appeared when he, when he speak the Ten Commandments before them, the people is fearful and they run. That purpose is for them not to sin. Amen. Amen. Okay, yes. Yes, brother. Sorry, you, brother. Just one moment. This brother here, then you, right? Yes, brother. No, well, I just wanted to say something based upon what Yakimi father was saying now. Yeah. about the superior. Yeah. Yeah. And I was saying, don't I'm thinking about trust and is really, you would only do it based upon a rational in your mind. So, you only do it based upon what? A rational in your mind. So you what, what, what are you told here? What are you told here? What? What? What's what this point to what? Trust must always be based upon an understanding of the capability of the thing to give success in what it says it is capable of doing. Amen. Well, and I want to say exactly what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's, that's exactly so. We have the same spirit. Amen. 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 Right? Let me repeat again. Listen to me carefully. And brother, I'm, I'm coming to you now, right? Okay. Trust must always be based on an understanding of the capability of the thing to give it success in what it says it is capable of doing. Now watch me. That is a powerful true statement, but there's a danger here. Because marijuana or alcohol, what it says it does is what it does. And if you want to reap what it does, then you will trust it to pray to give you what it does. Amen. Then you will take it. Amen? Amen. Amen. But trust is always based upon a knowledge of the thing that the thing is able to deliver what it says it could deliver. Yes. Now put that to God. You got to be taught yourself. Amen? Amen? I am sure. Watch me. I had a school teacher, brother, I come to you right now, after this, I come to you. I had a school teacher. He was a mighty chop as you know him tell you. Don't say he's going to school. Mr. Chop just came and tell me, I was in this class, he said, watch. He said, look at how short I am. He was short. Sir. He said, look at how tall all those teachers are. We want a sports ground. He said, all of us teachers run in. And he's telling me, he said, I am telling you, I will win that. I said, how? He said, even though I am short, I am going to put my foot to run like that. And when I put my foot to run like that, I will cover more ground than them who run it like this. Watch and see. I said, okay. <laughs> so your school boys stand up and watch. And all the teachers are lined up to run. And you know they shoot up the gun. And you know, as the man said he would run, he ran. And you know, he beat all of them five cups first. Then he comes up to me. See what I told you? <laughs> <laughs> you see, what he says he was able to do, what did he do? He did it first. That's why all of us children used to trust him. All of us children used to trust him. Because he was a teacher like that, he would show you what he said he would do, he would do. I remember once again, in class, he pulled out, he said, look at this, 600 British pounds. In that day, it was not so long ago. <laughs> but in that day, that was plenty. He said, how do you think I get it? He said, I just write a card, so I'm submitted to somebody, you know, 600 British pounds. You see? You try to make money. You know, I don't want to have a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another, in other words, yes. that's why people who gain more trust, the people who live up to their promises. Amen. Amen. That's why you watch yourself. Amen. 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 Because a lot of people talk, but few deliver. Amen. Just like you. And you now see my job on her one over the UNT. Amen. Because what he said he was doing, he was. He did. Yes. And although a lot of racists get with votes for the TV, yes. they voted and gave him a line alongside. Did you see that? Yeah. That's why trust is important 
in anything, even in politics. Yes, yes. Because when our government goes to trust of the people, they're going to get vote pay. Oh. Oh. Is it this one? Yes, Beautiful. So, so, brother, we have the same spirit here because I am giving you Psalms 118, 8 and 9 to read for us. That is the same thing, but it's just even a little more accurate. You will read it for us. Psalm 118. Eight and nine. Read it for us. And as you read what you board up, huh? watch the board. You will see you will see the board fit. This? That. What? This? That. What? Read on for us. Okay. It's better to trust in Lord, that we put confidence in God. Amen. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Amen. Amen. So you say trust. Confidence. You have anticipation that the princess is going to do something to you, and you have confidence that is trust. But the only thing is that when you have anticipation, it means you have a knowledge about them that they will do things to help you. Yeah. Amen. But the point is, they could disappoint you. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Here is why. Yes, brother, go ahead. Yes. I, I just seen a nice lesson we can learn and trust. How? Because when you watch out the garbage, when you're you catching full of garbage, you have to put it outside. The, the, the garbage man, you'll be superior in the able to carry it to the, to the dump. Then you, unless you get your have a car to put it. But yeah. I said to me, I'm going to put a, a, a two bag of garbage in somebody's trunk and ask the car to carry it here. That's right. You yeah. let them carry it. So he, he's superior and he had the ability to do it. In that. So right. like the doctor. That's well, right. So mm -hmm. what I've seen in trust, you can learn the, the oneness in God because ultimately you had to trust God. And here at creation, being on the same level with you, you don't have the abilities that every creation will have. Exactly. However, you have to trust creation to them. Yeah, right, exactly. they trust God. Use it, you're trusting in God, so that God will share how to view the creation so that the success will come from it. Right, now you see Sister Vanessa there quoted a scripture that I have here to quote too. But she quoted it very quick. After we finish all this discussion, when you quote that, now that text will make sense. Because it says, trust in God, how much? How much? With all thine heart. That is a superior to just like a chair, a bench, and everything. So while you trust everything, the only one you trust with all your heart is who? Amen? Amen. Do you get that clear? Amen. But wait before we come to that. Watch this one. Listen to this one. In a sinful world, where error is existence, in a sinful world where error is existent, some things present themselves as capable of giving success in the things it claims to be an expert in. But two things need to be considered in such a situation. One, the thing may be given a false knowledge and thus may only appear as a success provider. You didn't hear me. The thing may be given a false knowledge and thus may appear and thus may only appear as a success provider when it is not really so in reality. Do you get that clear? And there are many people like that. There are some men that come as if they're the prince on earth. 
They'll get everything for the woman, but they are so unscrupulous and corrupt. Before you know it, one child, two child, three, and, three, and the government mining all. And then they come before the government and say, living on that bridge, living on this, and they say, I have two children to mine, and which government will get a house, and how are you going to pay for the house? Where are the men? And they always have this deception to bring upon a woman's mind. Oh, that they are Mr. Love. <laughs> All that you have to do is to dig deeper with the truth and you will see through their body. Amen. 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 That's why I always believe when you have a relationship that you're building, get one of the persons to say or do something disappointing before you. And your reaction to them is going to show how much you love. Did I say I'm going to try something on you? <laughs> Don't run. Amen? Okay. Now, watch this. Point number two. Watch. The offerings of the thing. Watch me. This gives an offering. The offering is ability to write, right? The offering of the thing may be true and factual. But it is not good for the recipient. Do you get that clear? But it is not good for the recipient. <clears throat> In this case, trust is not warranted because overall success is not guaranteed, but may destroy life and thus a sense of security. Always remember, when a person has trust, with trust comes a sense of what? Security. You only feel secure because of the experience of trust. Trust is supposed to make you feel security. A sense of security. A sense of security is another experience, mental experience created by God. But the sense of security must only be placed where there's trust. And the trust must only be where there's the right thing to trust. Amen, amen. Amen, brethren? Amen. Are you listening to what we are talking about? Amen. This thing goes far. I'm just scratching the surface. I would like it as to be over that faster. Yes. <laughs> Point number two. The offerings of the thing may be true and factual. What it says it gives is true and factual. But it is not good for the recipient. The alcohol is supposed to get you tight and it will get you drunk. But it is not good for the what? Recipient. Okay. He was stream the sugar. But it is not good for the recipient. In, in this case, trust is not warranted. Because overall success is not guaranteed. But may destroy life and thus a sense of what? Security. And that's why everybody likes to have a sense of security. Watch me. Put me to sit down in a maxi with a drunken driver and expect me to have a sense of security. I have no trust in what he's doing and I'm not secure. What do you say? I say, driver, put me off here let me get the next one. Because the sense of security always goes with trust. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen? And you must remember that. Now we're going to take it all and we're going to tie it into the Lord and see something here, right? And then the scripture that Sister Vanessa quote, she's going to put again, right? Let's go on now. One more point here again. Trust is always for the sake of some sense of security and success. The success engenders the sense of security. So you trust something. You get success. The success makes you feel secure with this thing, with the trust that you have for that thing. Is that understood, my dear brethren? Now take all these things and you tie them into the board, eh? before we go through them. All things about God First, let's look at 2 Corinthians 1 9. 2 Corinthians 1 9, and then we'll take the other
Wow, lovely scripture. Huh? Lovely scripture. Huh? Think about this scripture. Huh? Apply with what we have talked about to a watch. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves. That we should not trust where? In ourselves. But in? Ball. Which one? Amen. Did you see that? Amen. You see the thing must be able to deliver. Could you deliver yourself from death? No. Amen? This thing must be superior. Are you superior to stop, to stop it from happening to you? No. I see, I, I, I see one, one of the purple dragon fellas in karate. The man's son learned all the moves in karate. He's a judo jitsu. He's a black belt many times over. Yes, sir. And he's walking in for the stage. Anybody come in anything, you have a thousand moves to train on. One bandit come, go and drop dead. That's the point. See, I'm not lying, I'm talking about just moves. Yes. Full bullet. All the moves he made with security and trust in his own ability to keep himself alive, one bullet, go and drop dead. Yes. <laughs> That's why we have to trust in who? Oh. Okay, now I, I quote that there for a reason, a strategic reason, as we go on. Let me read again. So, oh, one more scripture. I am told by Sister Angel, explain the mystery first of all. You know I should let you come up right here and explain that to all of us? You know I should let Sister Angel come up right here and explain that to us? This is a beautiful scripture. Let's read. Hebrews 3, 12 to 14. Take ye, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Watch me. These two things create an evil heart of unbelief. Hypocrisy and insincerity. You see what? 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 A hypocrite. The hypocrite on this side and on that side. Okay? He's saying he is this, but he's something else. If you mean to say that the hypocrite is saying that we trust God and yet he's saying we trust the world. It can't work because in your mind the world already is not superior, God is superior. But yet you so want the world you consciously put aside the superior to go to the inferior. It means you are what? Is that what? Is that understood? So already, watch, you can't be anticipating from God and have confidence in the world. Yeah. You get that clear? Yeah. You can't be anticipating from the world and have what? Confidence in the In other words, these principles here break the two. And once you prophecy and insincerity break the two, you can't be trusted in God. I hope you don't trust in God. Mm -hmm. The reason why you just get so much problems with an insincere person, do you know how much time is it? In an insincere person, you keep explaining to them some truth in a thousand ways. They always have an excuse to get away from it. In other words, you have, you have no confidence yourself that an insincere person will say, well, yes, I see I surrender to God. Because there are a thousand ways of getting away from the truth. Is that understood? Insincerity is antitrust. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. We're talking about a spiritual business here. Insincerity is antitrust. That's why you have to be sincere. Yes, brother. It's about like impatience. Is it insincerity causes impatience? Impatience is caused by a number of things. 
Sometimes it is based upon your education as to how fast to look for what you're looking for. Right? You should be it is that. But the truth of the Bible, and that comes that comes down to what I was coming with to, to you all here. Sometimes you may have impatience with God. And when you have impatience with God, you lose your trust. They need to give you something. Because you find it taking too long. The trouble taking too long to pass. The situation taking too long to go. But you see, God in his wisdom know why it takes so long. Because sometimes you want to burn out the drugs. <coughs> and it has to take longer than you anticipate. I remember a good friend of mine always tell me I'm in this situation in home here. I'm suffering and, and I don't have a job and this. And it's taking so long. I said, when you're home for a long time, God give you a long time to study. Amen. So when you go into the world, yes, so the secular world, you can't be doing it. So enjoy yourself and rejoice like a holiday when you study. It. And don't worry about all the pressure and so on in home. It wouldn't last forever. It's just for you to become disciplined because you're facing people like yourself and you have to learn to be able to handle those people like yourself. So you will stay in that situation a little longer. Today when I look at the person, they are, their cheeks bigger than mine. Because they go away near to that situation. Amen? Amen? Now they look back and that was like what? Nothing to them. Because they're so happy now. Amen? Amen. Yes. She tried everything. So she had she had a strong she, she utilized trust in a large way. There's some people like that. Even though the things fail, they utilize trust. I want to come to that in this quotation here that I'm giving to you. There are some people, they know the thing fail, they're still trusting. They see him fail once, they trust. Twice they trust. Three times they say, but boy, that person has confidence in that thing. <laughs> it may be because of a delusion, yes. But some people utilize trust over and over and over and over and over again. Good Lord, if you could do that for that, why you can't pray for God? Amen. 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 Amen? Usually when such people really, really know God, they never leave. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, let me finish this text for this for this sister here because we have to stop now. I continue. Verse 7. Sorry, sorry, let me see. Verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another today while it is called today. And that exhort is like each of us giving words to encourage one another. That's why you must come to church meeting. Amen. Mm -hmm. I can't say everything. When you are studying up there with one another, it's not I saying. Everybody saying something. So we need to exhort one another. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. You do not know how much times you say something to me and you exhort me. But we all exhort one another. What do you say? Amen. And that's what we are being told because exhorting one another brings trust. What do you say, brother? Amen. 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 And sometimes we begin to trust one another plenty. But trust for one another must always have a limit. Amen. Amen. Because we are not God. Amen. We are going on. Let any of you be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast where? Unto the end. end. So you have the trust at the beginning and you keep it unto where? The end. end. And that's how you become a partaker of Christ. Because if you let it go, along the way, you're no longer partaking of it. Amen? Amen. You must hold it way down to the end. Okay? Amen. Let me read my last quotation and I'm going to do little statements and then I'm um, Sister Vanessa will read her text again for us. Right, Sister Vanessa? I find your cheeks looking so big these days too. We'll continue. All things... All things about God is good. What do you say? Yes. 
Amen. 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 Is he even sending retribution upon us? It is good. What do you say? Yes. Yes. Amen. What he did to the Holy Roman Empire was good. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Right. So what? All things about God is good. And thus is worthy of trust. Amen. 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 In the fullest sense. You didn't hear that word. Yes. All things about God is good and thus is worthy of trust in the fullest sense. The knowledge he gives to us confirms this. That's right. Amen? Yes. Amen? The knowledge he gives to us confirms this. But wait. We even do trust where we have no real certainty. We even do trust where we have no real certainty in many things. Amen? Why not trust God with giving the seminal assurance? With giving the minimal assurance? You know, in other words, we are trusting in many things over and over, and we don't have no real assurance. Oh, good Lord, if you had the smallest assurance, at least I God trust him. Amen. If you say, I destroy Sodom and Gomorrah for Sodom, yes. you look back in history, you see a piece of finger turned into calcium. And that is on the next video coming up. <laughs> Taken from Sodom and Gomorrah. So you know what this clearly means. He really said brimstone and fire there. Just that alone supposed to make you trust that he will say what he wants and what he will do. Yeah. And tell yourself, if you did last days, I better say go. Amen. 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 It goes on. Such reliance is handled by God. So watch me. If you have a small, watch, watch. If you have a small, small trust, a little, little so in God, here's the point. Such reliance is handled by God right. Mm. It is handled by God enough to cause us to have more mm. intense and abiding trust in a confident way. Amen. So that's how God handles the little trust you have. Mm. And that is the reason why some of you are absent-minded as to the blessing that God gives you. Sometimes a little thing happens and you didn't see how God worked in that. Mm. Sometimes you just trust God a little little. You have no right where you should trust Him more. Eh? But because you, you, you don't keep your mind on your faith, you trust God a little, 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 and a little thing too. And it gives you a good blessing. And you know you ain't see that yet? You haven't seen that yet? Sometimes it's like if you're in a dead sleep, you wake up after and say, you know what security and peace and happiness we you all have here? Sometimes you meet a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you want you don't you can't understand what you need the rightest person. And that isn't enough to make you trust God more. Sometimes God makes you get away from many, many cruelties, many cruel persons who you're not suited for. And you can even have a little trust. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Amen. The little, little, little thing. Have plenty of trust. What do we say? Amen. And by the way, plenty of trust is not the intensity of your, your mental experience. Yeah? If the mental experience put it in many different places when it comes to God. Mm. You didn't catch a problem. You're not speaking like an evangelical. Mm. Because an evangelical will tell you, I'm coming to you right now, brother. An evangelical will tell you, brother, trust, trust. I'm going to tell Colonel Michael actually asked that question. I was now writing it out to you. Right. What about the evangelical trust? That's right. So that's right. Amen. So, Brother Michael, my dear brother, I'm speaking to you. <laughs> yes. She, asked, she said evil angels have trust. Imagine she said angels say evil angels have trust. <laughs> I know. They look at some of us and they trust. Now if they do this, they will get some of us. That's why I tell you, do not let yourself become an opportunistic target for evil angels. Do not let them party over you. 
Because some of them seek to engineer your demise. Mm. And there are a thousand gods that engineer your demise. Break free, break away. Mm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm. Now what with all your heart or all your mind is what? Is what is in your mind. The trust that God wants, watch me. You're going to pray, you're trusting God. You're going to eat, you're trusting God. You're going to sleep, you're trusting God. You're going to do your job, you're trusting everything. You're bringing the trust. Amen. Once you're bringing the trust, do you know what you do? You know what you do when you bring in the trust. Once you're bringing the trust, everything will be open more and and clear to you, and you will know your duty. Amen. So trust in God with all your heart. This means intensity of the trust. It means how much times you apply the trust. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you just apply the trust once or twice. Mm -hmm. Do it more yes. in many things. Amen. Yes, my dear brother. Sorry for keeping it so long. They come close together. Believe and trust come together in a circle. Believe trust. Believe trust. But when you believe, watch me. You accept something as to change your way. That is the kind of belief, not just normal belief. You believe, when you believe something, you accept it in such a way to change you. You understand, right? Okay? So you start trusting it. Okay? Now, quickly. One or two, one or two little pieces of point that I write on Number one, trust is attachment created. This trust is attachment created. Once you have trust, it attaches you to something. Is that understood? So trust is what? Attachment created. Point number two, a mental state of combined, a mental state of combined anticipation and confidence is what is called trust. Point number three, rational, convincing evidence creates trust. Rational, convincing evidence creates trust, or as we should say, direct trust. And trust, and final point, trust always have hope accompanying it. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So when you sit down in your motor car today, to go home, I know one thing for sure, you will have trust and hope. But the car can not function and some bad driver could drive bad. So you pray and say, Lord, keep us safe from all harm. That is getting damaged. Trouble, like the car breaking on and so on. Dangerous people driving bad. And accidents hitting the hitting up of the people and so on. You pray, you pray comprehensively, you touch everything on the road. Amen? Amen. And ask for his direction when you're going home. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. And in case you're driving, pray also that you wouldn't sleep. Amen, Amen. 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 I have seen that already. Yes. We were driving in a car, the man sitting down right to us. And the problem in the front seat, and the man I close, so he has my driving. <laughs> you can imagine, I make up the man and then end up with one big chat with him. <laughs> <laughs> And create some kind of interest and let you see the eyes fighting and fighting and fighting. And finally when he fight, he killed his feet feeling. Amen. And then he was able to drive for Amen. Amen. Some of you sit up in our vehicle and all your mind closed and you're not even watching where you're going. Somebody have to drive for the driver by watching. What do you say? Amen? Amen. My sister said, Amen. <laughs> when you see the foreign priest, is that so? It's always it is true. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. amen. So, please remember one more thing now. We're going to get our, our final scripture now. Amen. Sister Vanessa, put that scripture slow now. So, i i i i in my mind, the Bible says there's a way that seems right on that man. But the way is the end there for the days that get. Right? So Satan always wants us to go into a path 
it was Satan always wants us to go in and part that we need us to destruction, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why we must always trust. And you know, as you talk about the cheeks, right? And smile because, you know, we're not going too much. You more than anybody, you know, things I went through, right? And, you know, it's, it's something good, right? That, you know, you continue trusting, you know, as the song says, you just don't trust, but you obey, right? Trust and obey, amen. Now why does he say trust and obey for there's no other way? If you really trust, you will obey. What do you say? Amen. Right. So it says here, trust in the Lord with all my heart. Okay, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Let's be solemn here now as we listen to this beautiful scripture. Um, Sister Vanessa, um, she wants to know where it is taken from. Proverbs chapter 3, this is 5. Yes. Listen. Go ahead. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, oh, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. In how much? All oh, So now the trust is not the intensity, it's where? All the places it is. Amen. Amen, sister. And after she read it, she looks so beautiful. Oh. She looks so beautiful. And I know he agrees too. <laughs> she said she had so much time. Yes. 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 You know what I'm saying? She gets fast, gets like a cartoon, it means they really need it. <laughs> it <gets fast. laughs> Amen? Amen, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Now you wouldn't know the miracles of God. Let me tell you something. There are many miracles working out here right now. Between people. Many miracles were going to right here now between people. Mm -hmm. And you know what's the good thing about it? We will all see one another in heaven. Mm -hmm. And that miracle is finished. Mm -hmm. We will all see one another in heaven. Amen, brethren? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. If I look around, I see a lot of miracles. Yeah. Right? I'm looking at my dear Cynthia, a wonderful miracle. Right? I look at my dear Trisha there. Yeah. Miracle of miracles. <laughs> I'm not seeing the teeth here, you know she always tries to hide his smile, right? <laughs> see what? Look here, look here. <laughs> you see? There are many miracles working out here. And of all the miracles is our salvation. What do you say? Amen. Amen? Amen. I remember Sister Karin telling me, I have to come back to my, I have to come back to church. Why, Sister Karin? Okay. I want my children to be saved. I don't want them to get destroyed. I want them to be saved. Who am I seeing here today? Yes. And how much? Yes. See? Amen. Not the miracles working out here. You won't believe. Let me tell you one last thing. There are some people here, they were heavily Laodicean. Laodicean Laodiceanism is a spirit you don't break just so. I know. I had fight for years with it. Many of them. And, they, and, and you know what's the shocking thing? When they come here, after a while, they get so thoroughly first, you never know they were going out this year. <laughs> you see the difference. Yeah. Amen, baby? Yeah. Miracles go out here. And all, and all of this, it should encourage us to have what in the Lord? Trust. Which is a combination of? Anticipation and confidence. And what is behind it? Oh. Amen, brethren. Please remember these things right and let us start. Okay, my dear brethren. So let us have our closing prayer. Loving Father, we thank you very much for showing us this truth of our trust. Please help us to trust in you with all our heart. Please help us to trust in you in everything so that our confidence and success will be complete. And as we leave here to go home, please keep us safe from all harms, troubles, dangers, and accidents. Until we meet again, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen.